All right. So uh, since the Mattermost open source project began, there's been a ton of requests on mobile, mobile and mobile security features. And we started out with sort of a first generation um, mobile client uh, for iOS and Android that was built in, in native languages. And then uh, the second generation has been in, built in React Native. And all along the way, um, we've been giving more and more uh, options for enterprises to build secure mobile apps and, and really have in a, in a high trust environment. So everything from how we, uh, how the notifications are displayed um, to avoid sort of information going the wrong places um, to uh, offering the ability to customize these mobile apps uh, because all the source code is provided to uh, wrapping these mobile solutions in uh, EMM solutions. So, uh, so Corey, can you tell us a little about the history? Like, how did you know how to begin the mobile apps? The sort of first generation, the second generation, and how we've built in all the things that enterprises have been requesting around how notifications are configured, um, how the open source apps can be customized, and how we can even do sort of EMM on top of that. Yeah, sure. So, I, I mean, I could start by just giving a little, maybe a little bit of background. So, we have our first, you know, our what we call our classic apps, and those are just uh, shims to web pages. Uh, but they do receive push notifications, which is probably one of the most important features. Um, but really focusing on for us has really been our React Native apps or just what we call our Mattermost mobile apps. Um, and, and those are React Native and those support things like app config, uh, which is supported by you know, a large number of EMM solutions. Um, so I think that that's kind of the first step. I think to, to kind of step back, you can kind, kind of talk about the problems in this space, right? Um, one of them is, is we release a, an app through the App Store that's signed by Mattermost, the company. So we actually provide a hosted service called Push, uh, push Notification Services, um, where you can send us a message and then we'll push it to the official app. Um, so that's one way, right? Um, that is a message going through us, but it is all transient, meaning it's never written anywhere. It's only stored in memory. Um, but you can also... Uh, you can also tell your server to send us less information. So you can tell your server to uh, only send, let's say, the channel name instead of the full message body, um, or even less than that. You can even tell your server just to send uh, just someone received a notification. And we'll handle all the notification and push notifications for you. So that, that's kind of one option where we host it for you. It's very low friction, very easy to get up and running. But, um, yep. Now let's ask one question. So for the Europeans listening, that host notification service can also be located out of Frankfurt, Germany. So, so the information never leaves the EU. Is that correct? Correct. We have two different, we have several different services. We have, um, yeah, one where it's hosted in Germany um, and we have uh, another one where it's hosted in the United States. And then we also have just test services that you can use as well. Um, and, and that's a service we provide for you. Um, now, one of the other more interesting things is you can actually take all this yourself in house, right? We have, uh, the push notification service is a is an open source service. Um, um, you can take all that source code and it's already all compiled for you and you can just set it up and run it in house. Now, one of the things you have to do with that is you do have to sort of uh, become responsible for compiling your own apps with your own keys. Uh, but what we find lots of times is customers want to do that anyway, right? Because they want full control over it. They want to be able to, to uh, create the apps in their environment. Um, they want to be able to use their existing tools or infrastructure or their existing wrapper technology um, or their existing EMM solutions. Um, and so in those scenarios, you end up, you know, having full control because once again, the clients are all, you know, open source or whatever. Uh, you end up having full control over that and, and being able to wrap it or do whatever you want. And then um, being able to deploy those apps to your own enterprise app store. Um, um, and it has nothing to do with, with, with Mattermost and there's no messages coming out of your own infrastructure. Um, um, and it's all, it's all contained within that. Um, cool. Excellent. Yeah. So I think, uh, that's a nice summary of how, um, how these mobile security features from Mattermost have really evolved over time and, uh, really figuring out how do we meet all of the needs for these enterprises to create high trust experiences for how they communicate. Thanks, Corey. Mm -hmm.